All right, uh, I think we're recording now. Good morning, everybody. So uh, before we begin, some preliminary stuff. Uh, I don't know if you got the announcement, but during the lab session last um, last Monday, somebody pointed out, I think it's Marie, who pointed out na may typo ako dun sa hint na binigay ko dun sa problem set 2.2. In particular, I think it's equation 11. Na yung denominator ay may minus, pero dapat pala plus. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, kaya pala ang pangit ng approximation. Ano, mali yung computation ko ng moments or mali yung formula ko ng moments. And uh, once you made the correction uh, that there should be a plus in the denominator, then I think the error will go down significantly, I think to even less than a percent. So uh, if you got the correction early, then uh, good for you guys. Uh, I'm expecting to see very good results from your uh, problem set. But if you miss it, don't worry. Um, hindi ko kayo maminusan. Uh, gusto ko lang makita na merong... Uh, kailangan ko lang makita na naka-indicate na yung negative yung nagamit nyo dun sa problem set because it it was my fault so I cannot blame you guys for not double checking my integration there. Pero yun, plus dapat yung nasa ilalim and with that, the error goes significantly down. Okay? And then what else? Um, dun sa problem, uh, dun sa lab exer natin last uh, or kahapon, ano? so medyo pangit yata yung itsura nung, uh, nung result nung uh, no, in your simulation of the epidemic, uh, primarily because the number of infected individuals uh, will uh, will greatly increase at a very at a very uh, early stage in the timeline. You know, because medyo ang laki papala nung na invento ko na transmission constant. You know, so uh, I don't know if you guys uh, remember your graphs, pero yung pinakita sa akin ng mga students ko nung Monday. Napakabilis nung decline nung number of healthy individuals from day zero and to uh, say a couple of days after that. Kasi nga, yung transmission constant na nabigay ko ay medyo malaki pa. Uh, and then also, the model is not perfect or it's not even close to a useful model kasi tatlo lang yung compartments. Ano? So we have uh, the healthy individuals, the infected individuals, and, the, uh, uh, and those who suffered death. Uh, from the from the disease, ano? Uh, kaya ako nasabi na hindi ganong shaka realistic, kasi uh, based on the model, there's only one way that you can come out of the infected group. Nagiging uh, nakakalabas ka lang dun sa infected group kung ikaw ay ma mama kung ikaw ay mamamatay, ano? Sorry, medyo morbid yung yung phrasing, ano? But the only way to get out of the uh, infected compartment is to die, and usually hindi ganon yun nangyayari, ano? So this example ko mababa naman yung transmission constant na ay ah, yung mortality constant na nabigay ko kaya medyo mabagal yung uh, pag pag uh, baba ng number of infected individuals. Now to make the model more realistic, we could have included another compartment which is the compartment for recovered individuals, you know? So sila naman yung uh, gumaling na from the disease uh, pero na survive nila, no? Hindi sila na they hindi sila namatay due to this disease. And then dun sa recovery, there, we can still impose two possible compartments. So kapag ka ikaw ay naka-recover, after some time, either pupunta ka dun sa healthy individuals or pwede kang pumunta or dun sa healthy individuals which are susceptible to uh, to catch the disease. Ano? So pupunta ka naman dun sa healthy pool. Or pwede kang pumunta sa isang panibagong compartment, which is the compartment for those who are immune from the disease. Ano? So ganun ang nangyayari. Ganun yung dynamics ng modeling. Usually, you start with a basic model, and then you try to uh, to make it more complicated or to add more assumptions to it based on the trends na nakikita mo or the more information you get from the disease. Ano? So yun yung mga kakulangan ng models natin. So... Uh, Oh, but hopefully you you uh, you you got to see how uh, modeling using ODEs are uh, are um, are done. Okay, so for today we will continue our discussion of numerical methods for solving ODEs. And titing na natin ng linggong ito ay yung mga multi-step methods because previously uh, we talked about Euler's method, uh, Taylor's methods, and uh, the Runge-Cotta methods. Pero lahat sila ay one step lang. Meaning to get W sub I plus 1, okay, 
we only use uh, the function f, uh, the time step uh, t, and then the previous value w sub i. Okay. But there could be, uh, there are some methods that will require us to use estimates from two previous time steps or more of uh, previous time steps to get yung approximate para sa W sub i plus 1. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin na multi-step methods. They are still time marching algorithms, so we start at time T0, T1, T2, T3, T4 until Tn. But in order to get T sub i, we might need T sub i minus 1, T sub i minus 2, T sub i minus 3, and so on. Okay? So titingnan natin, uh, ano yung mga simpleng multi-step methods, how to implement them, or how they are derived, and then titingnan natin kung worth it ba yung paggamit ng additional information. Okay? And the discussions will be contained in module 12, a preliminary copy is already available in our Canvas page. Uh, and I said here, na medyo... Uh, medyo malungkot ng konti, no? this will be the last for the semester. Because as I mentioned uh, in the backstage, so no, na, even if we are just discussing the classical or the simple methods, I'm very confident that you guys can uh, can study methods on the fly based on how you uh, how you answer the, the lab experts and uh, the problem sets, okay? So uh, yeah, uh, medyo nagsisimula na magpaalam ang Math 175. So this is going to be the last module, and here we will uh, consider three uh, or at least two uh, classes of methods. The first one are the Adams uh, Bash Fork methods, which are multi steps that are explicit, meaning yung right hand side ng formula natin will not involve W sub i plus one. So meaning the formula that we will develop for uh, W sub i plus one will not include W sub i plus one. Okay, this is our right hand side, and then we'll also look at one implicit method or a class of them called the adams Moulton methods, multi-step pero implicit. Kasi yung formula para kay W sub i plus 1 ay mag i involved na kay F, kay T, kay H, kay W sub i plus 1, at saka ilang previous W sub i's, and so on. All right? So meron dito ang W sub i plus 1 involved. And the, the problem there is that the that relation cannot be solved explicitly in terms of uh, w sub i plus 1 so meaning there's no way that we can isolate lahat ng w sub i plus 1 sa isang side ng equation kaya ang tawag sa kanya ay implicit kapag ka implicit yung method kailangan natin ng root finding technique kung paano masasolve yung um, yung um, yung w sub i plus 1 and that makes the adams moulton methods a perfect candidate para sa computational part ng problem set number three. Okay, the last problem set. So probably I'll give you the last problem set uh, next week. Uh, siguro, um, so we'll have an exercise on the 30th. Probably I'll give it on the 31st. I know. And then um, probably I can give you at least until June 9 to finish it. Uh, tama ba? Yeah, siguro until June 9th or until probably June uh, June 12th, the Sunday, uh, para meron kayong dalawang linggo para gawin yung problem set number uh, number three. Okay, so ang item number two ay Adam's Moulton method. So sinasabi ko na ngayon pa lang. So kailangan nyo ng uh, hukayin uli, halukayin yung mga root finding algorithms nyo kasi gagamitin natin siya sa Adam's Moulton. You know? And then uh, you own you and then after that uh, you'll only need to uh, to worry about the final project. So yung mga gusto ng group pero wala pang ka group, please answer the uh, Google form that I sent via an email blast through Canvas. Or kung na miss nyo siya, punta kayo sa Canvas. Look at the announcements page. You can see there an email containing a uh, containing a link to a Google form. So pakisagutan before Monday 10 a.m. Kasi by, uh, at 10 a.m. I classify ko na kayo into groups, okay? Probably we can talk more about the uh, the details of the project on uh, on Tuesday uh, on Wednesday next week. All right. So on deadline niya gagawin natin ay probably last day ng uh, last day ng finals week. Ano? So para meron na kung isang linggo para checkan yung mga prob yung mga projects nyo. I can push it a little bit more kung depende dun sa kailangan ko checkan ano. 
So, depende sa progress niyo. Try to do it as soon as you can, pero kung hindi talaga kaya, kaya kong mag-adjust, okay? Uh, probably, kailangan ko lang ng dalawang gabing walang tulugan para tapusin yung pag-check, ano? So, yeah. Uh, but for now, do your best to do or to finish all the requirements uh, early on, you know? So going back to the module, so again, our last lab exercise will be on Monday the 30th. And ito yung mga kailangan yung tingnan. Number one is you should be able to derive the M-step adams bashford and adams Moulton methods because in the module, I'll just show you how to derive, say, a two-step adams bashford method. Tapos papakita ko yung three-step at saka four-step ano, na formulas kasi ang bilis mag, uh, maging komplikado ng derivation. So I want you to, uh, to, to see the pattern on how I derive the two-step adams bashford and probably also the two-step adams Moulton. Tapos yung three or four steps, you can do it as an exercise na lang. And then, of course, uh, we want to use uh, these methods to solve IBPs and scientific problems, okay? Now, here we go. So, uh, yung mga multi-step methods, as I've mentioned, these are methods that will use previous estimates or estimates from previous uh, time steps, okay? So, the general form for uh, multi-step methods ay yung nakikita natin sa equation 12.1. So, here, this is our analog for the divided difference. So, ito yung parang pampalit natin dun sa derivative. But note that this will involve a linear combination of uh, some W sub Ks. So, mula kay w, w sub i plus 1 minus m, papunta kay W sub i plus 1. So, si m, kayo yung magde-decide. Kasi si m, ilan yung previous estimates na gagamitin nyo. When m is equal to 1, then this right-hand side, will, uh, this left-hand side will reduce to W sub i plus 1 minus W sub i, which is basically the one-step formulation that we have considered in the previous discussions. Ano? Tapos, uh, yeah, si M yung number of steps. Tapos yung right-hand side, we want it to be a linear combination ng mga function values under the right-hand side, F. Okay? Now, there are more complicated uh, multi-step methods na posibleng gumamit ng total derivatives uh, kasi dito makikita nyo, puro function values lang. Pero if you're wondering, you can also consider an extension of the Taylor's method. Pero pag in-extend nyo kasi yung Taylor's methods, kailangan mo ng higher order partial derivatives. You know? And we have seen that uh, the, uh, the computations of the uh, higher order uh, total derivatives can get out of hand quickly. No? Nagiging masyadong mabilis yung pagiging komplikado ng, par uh, ng total derivatives, especially if you have a complicated model or a complicated ODE. That's why siguro ang gusto natin ay mas simpleng methods. Right? Mas simpleng methods na mayroong malaking order of accuracy. So in this uh, particular uh, instance, what we want to have as our right-hand side is simply a linear combination of function values. May kita nyo, swak na swak yan. Function value evaluated at time t sub i plus 1, tapos yung estimate para kay w sub i plus 1, uh, time t sub i, tapos function value at w sub i, and then, and so on. So, nagma-match yung index sa ilalim. Hindi siya katulad ng rung Gekata methods na nag update pa tayo nung, uh, nung second component ng function f or nung second argument sa function f. That's why our design for uh, the multi-step methods, gusto natin ay siya ay hindi ganun kakomplikado and we did that by just imposing the use of function values alone and then uh, ini-impose natin na yung function evaluation ay one stage lang. Hindi katulad ng Runge Kata methods na two stages. Diba sa Runge Kata, nagana tayo. Nag first line, first stage, nag Euler. Tapos yung sagot sa Euler, input siya dun sa function f on the second stage. So para siyang correction method or isang corrector method. Now, multi-step na nga to, so we are considering previous estimates. So that should compensate for the... Uh, for the use of just function values and function values at specific time steps. Okay. Now, this is our general formulation. So different methods will have different values for A1 until AM and B0 until B sub M. So ang goal natin para ngayon, para sa araw na to, ay tingnan, ano yung mga A sub I's at saka mga B sub I's para sa Adams-Bashford uh, method. Okay. 
Now, kapag ka si B sub 0 ay equal kay 0, so this term van uh, vanishes. So ibig sabihin, hindi na nakadepende yung right-hand side ng 12.1 sa W sub I plus 1. Kaya we can say that that method is explicit. Kung si B sub 0 kamalas malasa natin ay non-zero, then this guy will have a W sub I plus 1 on it. And if we, cannot a uh, if we are not able to isolate this or transfer the W sub I plus 1 to the other side of the equation, then we will end up with an implicit method. Yun yung titingnan natin sa Friday, specifically the Adams-Moulton methods. Okay. Now, isang weakness ng uh, isang weakness ng ng multi-step method. Sir, ganito yan. Meron na kong IVP. Tapos sa IVP, given yung initial condition. So that's why we didn't have any problems for the one-step methods because the initial first step or the uh, estimate at the first time value is easily set to be the initial value alpha, right? Yung W sub zero natin laging equal kay alpha, the initial condition. Now, kung meron akong halimbawa two-step method, so para makompute si W2, kailangan kong makompute si W1 at saka si W sub zero. And then the formula that I will develop, if I will apply it to W1, that will require me W sub zero and W sub negative 1, which is impossible. Ano? So, ibig sabihin, sa isang two-step method, kailangan ko ng dalawang initial values, W sub 0 and W sub 1, para makompute si W sub 2. Tapos, pag nakompute ko na si W sub 2, kaya ko ng compute si W sub 3 using W sub 2 and W sub 1. So, that's the first question that we need to resolve. How do we get sufficient initial data? Okay, And the answer there is easy. Hanggat hindi mo pa kayang i-implement yung uh, formula ng multi-step method mo, gumamit ka ng isang one-step method of the appropriate order para kunin yung sufficient initial data. Okay? So, limbawa, meron kang two-step method. Tapos dun sa two-step method, so kulang tayo ng isa. Ang alam ko lang ay W sub 0. Hindi ko alam si W sub 1. Ano? Now, I'll need to see ano yung order ng two-step method. If my two-step method is of order big O of H, then I need to find an order one, one-step method para compute si W sub 1. So pwede ka mag Euler's method para compute si W sub 1. And then once W sub 1 is computed, then we can proceed to compute W sub 2 using our formula. Okay? Kung order 2 naman yung two-step method mo, so big O of H squared yung uh, truncation error niya, pipili ka ng order 2 method para mo compute si W sub 1. And then the train will get going uh, once you uh, try to compute W sub 2 and so on. So yun yung kailangan natin, ma uh, yun yung gagawin natin para ma-address yung kakulangan ng initial data. It will be great if you have uh, an exact value or if you can observe, ba nag-experiment ka, kung kaya mo mag-observe for two initial data. But otherwise, we need to rely on approximations, okay? And again, the approximation should be of the same order as the one, uh, the multi-step method that you are considering. Okay? Now, punta natin yung unang klase ng method. Ito yung tinatawag na adams bashford methods. Ano? So, tatawagin ko sila mga AB methods. So, for adams bashford So, just recall, ito yung general form ng IVPs na consider natin. Yung nasa equation 12.2. And then for the adams bashford methods, we will assume there is a uh, uniform step size. Ang step size natin ay B minus A all over N, such that each of the T sub I's are computed as the initial time value plus I times H. Okay. Tapos, uh, what I'll do to generate this method ay ang unang step, integrate ko both sides of the equation. Actually, hindi pala integrate kagad. Multiplyin ko muna both sides by dt, right? So dt will be gone from here. It will come uh, It will come over here. And then I'll integrate both sides of this equation from t sub i to t sub i plus 1. And I'll get this one, okay? So this is perfectly fine. We can integrate with respect to x. So um, integral lang with respect to x, i x, evaluated at t sub i plus 1 minus t sub i, and that's how we get the left-hand side. So fundamental theorem of calculus lang yung ginamit. Because anyway, we are integrating with respect to the function x. You know? So medyo ano nga lang to, medyo 
uh, generic ng konte or mas uh, mas advanced ng konte dun sa Math 36 tools, ano? Pero if you look at the language, dx lang siya, integral ng dx ay x, and then we plug in t sub i and t sub i plus 1 for x, the value at t sub i plus 1 will become our minimum, and the value at t sub i becomes our subtrain. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Na ipuprove namin sa 155 bukas, ano? So, and then, Doon naman sa right-hand side, uh, wala masyadong malaking problema rito kasi kahit double variables or uh, dalawa yung variables dun sa integrand, you know, we were told to integrate with respect to t alone. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng excess na makikita mo rito should be treated as a constant. Okay? So, yung titingnan natin. However, dito magkakatalo. Kasi ito yung dahilan kung bakit hindi tayo nakakakuha ng exact solution. Kasi kung madaling i-integrate ito, then we're done. Because uh, essentially, the function can be treated to be a separable equation. So madaling kumuha ng exact solution. Pero yun yung problema natin. Mahirap i-integrate si f even with respect only to the variable of time or to the time variable t. All right? So yun yung titignan natin. Ito yung unique kay Adams Bashford. Ang ginagawa ng Adams Bashford methods ay pinapalitan niya si little f by the Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So, math 174 is waving, unit 1, hello. So, sana tandaan niyo pa kung paano mag-compute ng Lagrange interpolating polynomial. Ano? So, kaya hindi pwedeng kinakalimutan talaga yung mga natutunan na natin before. So, pwede niyong halukayin uli. Ano yung program ko nga para sa Lagrange? Ano? So, the idea here is we will replace f by the uh, by the Lagrange uh, interpolating polynomial that passes through the following time steps. T sub i, T sub i minus 1, T sub i minus 2, hanggang T sub i plus 1 minus m. All right? So there would be a total of m points to be considered. Okay? Uh, Magdi-decide ka kasi from the beginning ilang time steps yung, uh, yung gusto kong gawin. So that will be your value of m. So, kung nakapag-decide ka na sa value ni m, kukunin mo yung interpolating polynomial para kay f relative to t equals t sub i, t sub i minus 1, t sub i minus 2, hanggang t sub i plus 1 minus m. And then, how many such uh, terms do we have? Uh, ito ay meron akong m minus 1, meron ako ritong m. Tama ba? Kasi ito ay 1, 2, Tapos ito ay i minus m minus 1. So uh, that's a total of m minus 1. So I will have a total of m points, all right? So m points yung dadaanan ng interpolating polynomials. And interpolation theory tells us that if you have m points to be uh, considered, then you will have a polynomial of degree, uh, sorry, an interpolating polynomial of degree at most m minus 1, okay? So, tapos si x treated as a constant palagi. So, here, uh, we will replace f by this sum, ano? where p sub m minus 1 is our Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So, ang itsura niya ay summation siya ng mga Lagrange interpolating, uh, or sorry, Lagrange basis polynomials na ganito yung itsura, tapos times the function value at the specific time step. Okay? Now, we will see here that indeed, yung mga x sub i's nagiging constant sila talaga. Kasi sa bawat isang time step, ano, so kailangan nating i-plug in yung time step na to papunta dun sa x. So meaning the second variable really becomes a constant. But that constant is dependent on the time value. So essentially, indeed, f is an implicit function of t. So kaya nakocompute natin ito, really, ang nagiging variable na lang dun sa interpolating polynomial natin ay si variable t. Okay? Tapos, if you still remember, uh, our error term para dun sa degree at most m minus 1 interpolating polynomial is given by this factor. So, ito yung m derivative of f evaluated at uh, time step c ano, all over m factorial times the product ng mga t minus the t sub i is used or the abscissa is used. Ito yung omega x na ginamit natin sa 174. Okay? So ito yung associated error term and, and, and it will be important once we trace ano yung order ng approximation. Kasi mahalaga 
dun sa mga multi-step methods na take note natin ano yung lo- ano yung order ng local truncation error. Kasi siya yung magsasabi kung anong mga one-step methods yung pwede nating gamitin para sa pagde-derive ng sufficient initial data. Okay? So, okay. So, I hope you get the idea. Simple lang naman, di ba? Uh, usually, pag masyadong komplikado talaga yung function, pinapalitan natin siya ng interpolating polynomial. So, ganun din dito sa Adams-Bashford methods. So, papalitan ko siya. So, dun sa equation uh, 12.3, si F, papalitan ko na. Nung P, papalitan ko na siya neto. All right? The interpolating polynomial plus the error term. So, we'll get this one. Tapos, nirearrange ko na yung integrals. Ano? So, that means, if we will compare this to what we have, uh, in an equation 12.1, yung general form ng multi-step methods, we see that, oh, ito, ito yata yung mga B sub i's na kailangan natin i-consider. Because remember, the right-hand side of equation 12.1 involves a linear combination of the function values. And the, right, uh, the, the right-hand side of equation 12.5 perfectly fits into that formulation. You know? So ito yung gagamitin nating B sub i's probably divided by h kasi may divided by h doon sa kaliwa all right tapos yung ilang mga a sub i nagzi zero lamang kasi ang ginamit lang natin dito ay x sub i plus 1 saka x sub i so zeros na yung ibang a sub uh, i doon sa 12.1 tapos magdi-divide ako diyan ng h so magdi-divide lang ito ng h so but basically the b sub i are determined by the integrals of the lagrange basis polynomials Yun yung eco compute natin. All right? Now, and that's it. Once you get uh, this integrals, you have decided what the uh, number of steps to be used, then makakarong ka na ng Adam Bashford or ng Adam's Bashford method. Ano? So, yun na, yung derivation ng AB methods. So, tingnan natin yung specific. Let's try to derive the formula and implement a two step uh, Adam Bashford method. Tawagin natin siyang AB2. Para sa AB2, gagamitin natin ay M equals 2. So, ibig sabihin, M equals 2. So, kailangan kong kunin yung Lagrange interpolating polynomial for F hanggang kanino. Dapat dadaan siya kay T sub I hanggang si M ay 2, no? So, hanggang T sub I minus 1. So, T I saka T sub I minus 1, which makes sense because we promised to do a two-step method. So, kailangan ko si T sub i sa si T sub i plus 1 para dun, sa, para dun sa method. So, sila yung gagamitin kong uh, pang-interpolate dun sa function f. Now, going back to 174, you can easily see na ito yung Lagrange interpolating polynomial, except that dapat ito ay x. So, why yung nasulat ko na naman? So, pardon the, the, um, the typo, ano? So, x siya. So, ito yung Lagrange interpolating polynomial where h is equal to t sub i uh, t sub i minus t sub i minus 1. You know? So, si h siya si uh, t sub i minus t sub i minus 1. Okay? Or basta siya yung common uh, increment. You know? So, shortcut ko na lang. And then, the error term is the second derivative. Okay? times uh, t, t minus t sub i times t sub uh, times t minus t sub i minus 1. Let me double check that. Mm -hmm. Yes, just use m equals 2 in the error formula. Okay. So ito yung Lagrange interpolating polynomial para kay uh, function f relative to the points t i and t sub i minus 1. Tapos uh, kung, ma kung maalala nyo, Sabi natin, ang crucial ay yung integral ng Lagrange basis polynomial. For this uh, interpolating polynomial, this is little l1, this is little l2. Sila yung Lagrange basis polynomials. So si b1, ay integrate ko lang yung unang Lagrange basis polynomial. Siya yung nakakabet kay ti, x sub i, or kay f of ti minus x sub i. And then I just perform a change of variable here para mas madaling ma-evaluate yung uh, integral. Pero kaya nyo naman tong i-integrate. Uh, linear function lang naman siya. Pero para daw dun sa derivation, mas madali. Uh, yung si Brady nag-introduce ng substitution na to. 
So ito yung lumabas na integral, which is a nicer form. You get 3h over 2. So ibig sabihin si b1 ay 3h over 2. Tapos you do the same thing for b2. You get b2 equals negative h over 2. Tapos para makita natin ano yung local truncation error, ano yung term na magbibigay sa atin local truncation error, we integrate the entire error term r sub m minus 1. Okay. So makita natin na yung error, the local truncation error uh, in the interpolation or actually the integral of the truncation error, in a truncation error, the integral of the error in the interpolation is equal to 5h cubed or all over 12 times the third derivative evaluated at some number c hat. Okay. Tapos isusulat ko to. Sige, plug in ko na tong mga integrals na to dito sa form ng equation 12.1 with m equals 2. And then I'll get this. After dividing both sides by h. Remember yung error, ay lagi nating kinocompute yung LTE o yung local truncation error, lagi nating tinitingnan dun sa pagpapalit ng derivative by a difference equation. That's how we define the LTE. That's why even though we have equation 12.5 in the form of uh, x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i serving as the left-hand side, to get the local truncation error, we need to write the right-hand side in terms of a difference equation. Kaya dapat nagdi-divide ako by h. Tapos kung ano yung error term na natira dito sa kanan, siya yung tinatawag natin na local truncation error. The local truncation error is the error incurred by replacing the derivative by a difference equation. Kaya kailangan divided difference yung nasa kaliwa. And so here we can say na, ah, okay, there's your error. And the error is of order big O of h squared. So mahalaga kasi yung error kasi siya yung magsasabi aling one-step method yung kailangan kong pangpuno or pwede kong gamitin pangpuno doon sa kulang na initial data. Okay? So in summary, we know that the uh, that AB2 is of order big O of H squared. And then to get X sub I plus 1, or actually to get W sub I plus 1, I simply multiply both sides by H, okay? And then add X sub I or uh, add x sub i to both sides and then replace all x sub i plus ones and all x sub i's by w sub i plus ones and w sub i's and I will get this formula. Para kay w sub i plus one. And again, w sub zero will be copied from the IVP given as a problem, so might as well use it. Now, w sub one cannot be computed using this formula. So, kailangan natin mag-invento o humanap ng estimate para sa value sa first time step. But again, since AB2 is of order 2, kailangan kong gumamit ng, ka, uh, pwede akong gumamit ng kahit na anong one-step method of accuracy of order big O of H squared. And we have seen a lot of them, right? Uh, actually, yeah, apat yung nakita natin. Meron tayong Taylor of order 2. Kaya lang ang disadvantage niya, gumagamit siya ng total derivatives. Or pwede nyo gamitin si RK2, alright? May tatlo tayong variants ng RK2. Meron tayong modified Euler, meron tayong Yoon, saka meron tayong optimal RK2. Actually, you could also define your favorite RK2. Ano, pwede kayong gumamit, uh, mag-imbento ng sarili nyong RK2. So you have a lot of options para sa W sub 1. Pero pag dumating ka na kay W2, W3, W4, and so on, you're gonna use this formula, which is simple. Because it only requires, actually, makita nyo dito, function evaluations lang kay F. Pero ilang operations, makikita nyo dalawa on its face. Pero pwede nyo yung ma-reduce sa isa lamang. Kasi itong guy na to, ay malamang na-compute nyo na mula dun sa previous time step. So pwede nyo i-save yung ginamit yung uh, itong function value na to. Mula, mula dun sa previous time step to save on the number of operations. So essentially, if I will be counting the number of function evaluations to be done in every step of AB2, all right, isipin ko lang isang function evaluation na yung kailangan ko sa W sub i plus 1. Kasi etong value na to, malamang na compute na yan dun sa previous step, so pwedeng sinave ko na lang siya. Tapos i-call ko na lang siya dun sa susunod na time step. So basically, to save calculations, isa lamang 
yung kailangan kong bagong function evaluation at every time step of the Adam Bashford of order two. Okay. Now the derivation can be done similarly for higher or to get uh, uh, the Adam Bashford method or the Adams Bashford method of more steps. Uh, I mean more than uh, two steps, you know? So medyo mahaba nga lang yung magiging derivation because you will need to integrate more Lagrange interpolating polynomial. Uh, sorry, more Lagrange basis polynomials, and that integration will uh, increase in complexity. Kasi kapag ka, uh, dalawa lang yung ginamit mong points ano, sa interpolation, linear lang yung mga Lagrange interpolating, uh, yung mga Lagrange basis polynomials. Pero pag tatlo na yung points na ginamit mo, bawat L sub J, bawat isang Lagrange basis polynomial ay quadratic. Kapag ka apat na points or four step yung method, uh, cubic yung magiging Lagrange interpolating polynomial, tas kailangan nyo siyang integrate. The only consolation is that we are only integrating polynomials and MATLAB can can give you the symbolic formula or the symbolic uh, uh, the symbolic result of that integration. So, hindi siya malaking issue. Uh, matrabaho lang for, for us. Ano? Pero it is worth it because uh, I, will, I claim without proof that an M-step Adams-Bashford method is of order big O of H to the power M. Tapos ang kagandahan sa kanya, hindi natin kailangan ng mga total derivatives. Hindi natin kailangan mag-oiler, tas mag-second stage pa ng correction, katulad ng sarangge kata of, or, of higher orders. Ang kailangan lang natin ditong pagtrabahuhan, mahanap yung mga constants uh, na multiplier sa bawat isang function value ni F. Okay? Tapos yung function evaluation, hindi ganun kamahal. Kasi yung mga preview, yung karamihan, ng mga terms para kay W sub i plus 1 ay na-compute mo na dun sa previous time steps. So, yeah, I think uh, using uh, Adam's Bashford methods of uh, more the, of more uh, uh, more values of M ano, or para sa mas mataas na value ni M ay worth it. Kasi hindi siya ganun kakomplikado patulad ng mga ibang methods na nakita natin last time. And I think my internet is down. Hello guys, okay. nasa meeting pa ba ako? Uh, okay. okay, there you go. Uh, parang nawala ako doon for some time kasi <laughs> nagreklamo yung sa laptop ko. Uh, Nag-sound check ako doon sa, doon sa iPad. So kaya nagka-echo. So sorry about that. But I was saying na mukhang worth it yung additional work to be done in, in deriving uh, Adams Bashford of multiple steps. Kasi big O of H to the power M yung kanyang, um, yung kanyang local truncation error. Okay? But, of course, dahil madaya ako, oh, there you go again. Nawala na naman ako. Okay. Dahil madaya ako, uh, hindi ko na pinakita yung detalyadong derivation ng AB3 o ng Adams Bashford methods of three steps. Ano? So, pinakita ko na lang siya. You can verify that this would be uh, AB3. And local truncation error niya, of order 3 talaga, 3H cube all over A times the fourth derivative of X evaluated at C. All right? So, power siya ni H cube. So, siya ay order 3 method. Tapos yung four-step Adams bash for it. Sorry, nakalimutan ko yung mga S kay Adams. So, Adams pala yung apelido niya, hindi Adam. So, uh, eto naman siya. Okay? Uh, and the truncation error is of order big O of h to the power 4. And you see here na sa four steps, kailangan ko ng apat na initial data. The, the very first initial data will be from the IVP, but the missing uh, initial data 
will be coming from an order for method. Kasi dapat nagsaswap. Kung ano yung order ng AB method, dapat yun yung gagamitin, ganun din yung order ng method na gagamitin mo para punan yung mga kulang na initial data. Okay? Now, let's look at uh, an example. Let's see AB2 in action. Okay? So, ito yung paborito nating IVP, yung dx over dt equals 1 plus x over 7. On the close interval 1, 6, the initial data is x of 1 equals 1. And then, gamitin natin step size ay 0 0.5. Para medyo kahawi geto ng mga previous methods na ginawa natin. Okay? And then, we'll compare what we'll get from AB2 mula dun sa Taylor's method of order 2 at saka dun sa modified Euler na Runge Kata of order 2. So, kulang pala yung size. Okay, there you go. So, ito yung solution ko. So, dito, uh, hindi ko na-specify pala dun sa example kung ano yung gagamitin ko para punan yung initial data because we have several options. You can use T2, pwedeng modified Euler yung gamitin, pwedeng uh, optimal Runge Kata of order 2, pwedeng uh, point method or yun method, or your favorite uh, A1 or A2 para dun sa RK2. Ano. So, uh, yeah. In my solution, I used the, the modified Euler method, the RK2 uh, modified Euler variant to get W sub 1. Okay. Tapos ito yung values na nakuha ko. So, ito, initial condition. Ito nang galing sa modified Euler. And then the rest were computed using the formula that we derived for 12.1. And you see that the average relative error is quite good. It's below 1%. Tapos yung L2 relative error din ay mababa rin kesa kay 1%. So I say I get a good result coming from uh, AB2. Tapos kawawa na naman si Euler kasi si Euler 6%. Pero that's understandable because Euler's method is of order 1. Okay? So uh, partida yon ni Euler. You know? So 6% still good. But one order higher, uh, just more function evaluations, then yeah, napababa uh, natin to less than a percent yung relative error. Now, what I did next, uh, yeah, sigo, ayan yung table. Again, mas maganda na may picture. A picture paints a thousand words. So, yung table na yun, pwede mong palitan na lang netong graph na to. And you see na, yeah, mukhang ang ganda ng solution uh, because when we put it side by side with the uh, the other methods, Taylor's method, the modified Euler method, and actually the exact solution, halos nag overlap na doon yung result mula kay Adams Bashford. Ano? Uh, medyo, nagkakaroon lang sila ng deviation dun sa medyo uh, tail end na nung interval. And that is understandable because probably here, nag-kick in na yung global dis uh, discretization error. Kasi di ba, uh, para makompute si W sub I plus 1, Ginagamit natin yung mga estimates sa W sub i. Kay AB2, ginamit pa nga natin si W sub i minus 1. So yung error mula dun sa mga previous estimates, nakaka-apekto sila dun sa error dun sa current approximation. Yung errors na nag-accumulate na yun, tinatawag natin silang GDE. Kaya usually ang concern ng mga gumagamit ng uh, time marching algorithm, sa itingnan, gano'ng kaganda, medyo ano sila, extra cautious sila dun sa estimates, dun sa tail end ng interval. Kasi nga doon nagaganap yung pinakamalaking propagation ng global discretization error. But, uh, but, um, but in our example, yeah, the, uh, the error is still tolerable. Ano? So, ano nga ba yung maganda? Uh, si Adams Bashford ay kulay, uh, kulay blue. And uh, nag-overlap na siya dun sa color red which is basically Taylor's of order 2, medyo nagkaroon siya ng deviation dun sa actual solution. You know? uh, because that's understandable kasi sa bawat isang run o sa bawat time step, dalawang previous value yung ginagamit natin mula kay AB2. So understandable na medyo mas malaki siguro yung global discretization error ni AB2. Pero we're counting on the nice uh, or the small local truncation error incurred in the derivation of AB2 para ma-counteract yung paglaki ng global discretization error. Okay? Now, ang next question is, okay, accurate siya, so what? Uh, 
hindi pala so what. Okay na, so accurate siya. Pero ang tanong ay, worth it ba yung additional evaluation na kinonsider natin? Ano? So, yung pag-upgrade natin mula kay T2, mula kay RK2, worth it ba papunta kay Adams Bashford? Because Adams, uh, Adams Bashford's method will use multiple steps. Si na natin, worth it ba yung additional work or the consideration of previous estimates? Baka naman hindi. So, mag-stick na tayo kay Taylor at saka kay Modified Euler. So, what I did is investigated it a little bit and then I tabulated the relative error dun sa tatlong methods. Okay? So, ito yung relative error sa tatlong methods. Of course, uh, initial uh, initial endpoint, walang problema. Lahat sila ay zero kasi kinopya lang natin yung initial condition. Then sa first time step, sa 1.5, mapapansin nyo parehas yung RK2 at saka yung AB2 kasi kinopya ko lang yung W sub 1 galing kay RK2. I could have chosen to use uh, yung kay Taylor. Uh, pero nakita ko kasi si RK2 yung parang may pinakamaganda among the other methods that we considered. Pinakamagandang approximation dun sa X of 1.5. So, siya yung ginamit ko para kay AB2. And then, ito yung table of errors. And you see na, uh, hold on. Si AB2, dito sa mga dulong parts na to, or actually starting, yeah, starting here. Siya na yung may pinakamalaking relative error compared dun sa tatlong methods. So you might say, sir, mukhang wala namang, ano, wala namang katuturan yung pag-upgrade natin papunta sa AB2. Kasi medyo slightly, mas malaki pa rin yung error ng AB2 kesa kay RK2 at saka kay Taylor's. Understandable na hindi ako magte-Taylor kasi kailangan ko doon yung total derivative. So, but why should I not just stick to RK2? rather than using multiple steps which will incur us additional work. Okay? Now, unang-una, expected itong resulta na to. Kasi si AB2, kung matatandaan nyo, oh, by the way, ito, nice picture. Uh, pinlat ko yung uh, global, uh, yung, yung relative errors mula dun sa tatlong methods. And you see na after this point, okay, Adams Bashford produced the highest relative error. Okay? Uh, sorry, uh, hingin ko yung additional five minutes to finish this module. Ano, konti na lang. So, yeah, worth it nga ba yun? Unang una, expected yung results. Bakit siya expected? At least with respect to Taylor's method. Ano? Kasi yung, uh, yung local truncation error kay, Taylor, uh, kay, uh, yeah, kay Taylor's at saka kay uh, AB2 ay parehas of order 2. Pero yung kay AB2 na derived natin kanina, uh, 5 over 12, yung factor that comes with H squared and X triple prime. So there's an H over 12 factor uh, to H squared in determining the relative error, okay? Or the uh, absolute error, you know? Pero kay T2, yung, uh, yung local truncation error ay 1 sixth ng H squared X triple prime of C. Now, this X triple, uh, yung C dito at saka yung C dito, possibly magkaiba. Pero they could, be, they could be treated as of the same magnitude. So, hindi nagkakalayo yung value na to at saka value na to. Nagkakatalo sila dun sa factor. So, si T2, multiply ng 1 sixth yung H squared times sa constant. Pero kay AB2, multiply siya ng 5 over 12 times H squared. 5 of... 5 over 12 is, I think, uh, around 2.5 uh, times higher than 1 over 6. So, kaya understandable na in the long run, nagiging mas mataas yung relative error ni AB2. Okay. So, uh, kaya expected siya. So, going back dito, worth it ba? Well, if you think about it, it is not a fair comparison, you know? Kasi sa baw, dun, sa, dun sa Taylor's method, sa bawat step, magamit tayo ng dalawang function evaluations. Ano yung dalawang function evaluations? Evaluation kay F at saka evaluation dun sa total derivative. So if you're using a, a 10 points or a total of 11 points, 10 points, excluding the uh, initial point na wala naman tayong computations na ginagawa. So kay Taylor, dun sa example natin, gumamit tayo ng 20 
function evaluations, evaluating F and evaluating the total derivative. Kay Runger Kata, kay modified Euler, ganun din, kasi meron ka rin siyang two function evaluations per time step. So, kasi di ba sa first stage, nag Euler tayo. Actually, mas marami nga yung RK2 eh. Kasi sa first stage, nag uh, RK, uh, nag Euler tayo. Sa second stage, I think dalawang function evaluation yung kailangan natin. Uh, tandaan nyo ba guys? Sorry, mahina ako sa memorization. So, tingnan ko nga. Balikan natin yung Euler. Ah, yung RK2. Bakit ko lang yung copy ko? Hold on. But what I want to point out is mas maraming operations yung ginagamit kay uh, kay RK2. Ah, dalawa lang pala. Kasi dito, first stage nag Euler tayo, so may isang function evaluation. Tapos dun sa second stage, which is the application of the midpoint rule, panibagong function evaluation. And this function value is not computed before. Kasi ang input mo dito ay t sub i plus h over 2 at saka w tilde. Where w tilde is the result from Euler's method. So parang nagko-correct tayo rito. Okay? So dalawang function evaluations yung kailangan natin kay modified Euler. Pero dun sa, so that means there would be a total of 20 here. Pero kay Adams Bashford of order 2, around 10 lang yung kailangan natin. Sampung time steps, pero um, isang, isang function evaluation lang at every time step. Kasi nga pwede mong isave yung isang function value na nanggaling dun sa previous approximation. Ano? Around 10, hindi siya exactong 10 kasi yung W sub 1 kailangan kong gumamit ng RK2. So may dalawa ko doon. Tapos sham na sham na tigitigi sa so total of 11 I think kay AB2. So hindi parehas yung approximation kasi nga almost double yung number of operations uh, to to uh, number of function evaluations to be carried out dun sa RK2 at saka kay T2. All right? So to make a fairer uh comparison uh kinalahati ko yung step size kay Adam Bashford. Uh, kasi nga, I can afford to do so. Kasi kalahati lang no number of function evaluations yung kailangan ni AB2. Pag ginawa niyo yun, so ang step size ay 0 0.25 na kay AB2. So that's around 20 function evaluations. Ganun din si T2. Ganun din si modified Euler. So makikita nyo dito on this plot that Adam's Bashford methods produced the smallest relative error. Okay, siya na yung may pinakamaganda. So we can afford to uh, to lessen the uh, to lessen the function evaluations kasi nga ah uh, sorry to lessen the step size kasi nga kakaunti lang yung function evaluations na kailangan kay AB2. And now remember na yung 5 over 12 dito times h squared. So siya ay magiging ano na? Magiging 5 over 12 times h squared over uh, uh, 4 na kasi yung step size natin ngayon kinalahati natin. So this is about 5, po, uh, 5 over 48. Uh, compared mo dun sa oil, uh, times h squared. Compared mo dun sa Euler, uh, dun sa Taylor's na h squared over 6. So mas malaki na ba to? Uh, kailangan ko i times 8. Yeah, because this will be 8 h squared over 48 mas maliit na yung kay AB2. Alright? Kapag ka ginawa ko yung H ay H over 2 kay AB2. So, kesa dun sa Taylor. Kaya expected na mas maganda na yung sa Adams Bashford. Okay? Now, what uh, my challenge for you guys, uh, probably in preparation for the lab excerpt on uh, on Monday, I'll give the question probably tomorrow pagka naisip ko na kung ano yung lecture ko for Friday, you know? So, I ulitin itong calculations sa ginawa ko using the three-step Adams-Bashford 
and a four-step Adams bash for it. It's nice because those two formulas were already derived for you. Okay. Tapos, uh, magsulat na kayo ng program. Hindi ganun kahirap yung programming para dito. Ano? Kasi straightforward lang yung uh, calculations na, na kailangan gawin. Tapos, uh, or dinaya ko nga lang din yung program po. Hindi ko na sinave yung previous function value. Kasi, uh, hindi naman ganun kamahal yung pagkocompute ng function values. Ano? So, kaya ito mismo yung in-encode ko dun sa aking uh, dun sa aking uh, dun sa aking program. Tapos, ito ay kinompute ko using a separate program para dun sa RK2. So, niran ko lang yung RK2 program ko, kinapipaste ko yung W sub 1 ko nakuha dun, tapos yun yung ginamit ko rito sa Adams Bashford. So, I think it's pretty straightforward. So, uh, I, I'm sure you can do it easily, guys. So, pagdaruan nyo lang, and then try to recreate my example here. And then when you got bored, try the three-step and the four-step method. Do the analysis, compare it to T3 and RK3 and T4 and RK4 respectively. And then once you're done with that and you still have nothing to do, which I know is impossible, I know, or is far from the truth. So, try nyo ring sagutan. Palitan ito ng isa pang IVP nating pinaglalaroan. Okay? Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, I almost uh, ate up all of uh, all of the time for the class. Uh, any questions? I hope clear your discussion today. Pag uh, explain ko sa problem set kung paano na derive yung Adams Bashford. Ah, uh, wala na maglalagay ng formula ha. Pwede yung ikwento lang na pinalitan lang yung f ng interpolating polynomial and that's it. You know? so one sentence or two sentences na answer ay okay na for me. So, yun lang yung hinahanap ko. So, yun yung mga tingnan nyo for the third problem set. Okay? Waiting for Oilers, come back, Charles. Um, wala na. Talo na talaga yung Oilers method. Ano? So, but anyway, si Euler naman siya yung modified Euler. So, ginalingan din naman ni Euler. And you see Euler's uh, modified Euler is the second placer here. So, yeah. Marami nang ginawa si Euler. Nag-move on na siya sa, sa Euler's method. So move forward din tayo. So other questions? So if there are none, thank you for uh, joining me today, guys. And then let's see each other again on, on Friday. Until then, keep safe, guys. Bye-bye.